Hi, I'm Mark Kistler, and I love to draw. I love teaching students how to draw. In fact, I've been teaching drawing for over 40 years. I even taught two different series on public television. In 1980s, I did a series called The Secret City with Commander Mark. And in the 1990s, I did a PBS series called The Imagination Station. We actually won the Emmy for that series. Pretty cool, huh? Many of my past students have gone on to pursue their passion and their love for the visual arts, their love for drawing and animation, to pursue careers with uh, companies like DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney, and Marvel Comics, to name a few. They've created movies that we've all learned to love and enjoy, like Big Hero 6, Kung Fu Panda, Star Wars movies, Despicable Me, and so many more. I created this course for the absolute beginner all the way up for the super turbo advanced artist. Everybody could use reminders and refreshers to build your drawing skill. I developed the course for the very young students but from elementary school all the way up to the very, very young at, at heart, all you, the seniors who love to draw out there. For the person who, who always wanted to learn how to draw, but they thought they couldn't draw the straight line. I guarantee you I can teach you how to draw. My goal for you for this series is number one, to build your drawing skill. Number two is to launch that creative confidence so you can take a piece of paper and draw anything on the paper that you have in your imagination and in, that you can see in the world around you. I want to ignite your creativity with these lessons, the idea of building with your imagination. I want you to soar with your pencil power imagination. So why learn how to draw? Well, drawing number one is visual communication. You're showing people what things look like, how they work and how they fit together. Drawing is, is also a window into your imagination. You're showing the world what you're thinking and what you're creating. Drawing builds strong imagination. Now, everyone benefits from stronger, more creative problem-solving skills by launching beyond the thinking of two-dimensional to solving problems with three-dimensional thinking. Drawing is a wonderful, relaxing, emotional, soothing activity. Hey, therapy and a pencil. Most importantly, drawing is fun. Learn to draw in 3D with me in 21 lessons in 21 days. Lessons that you can follow in real time with step-by-step -step tutorials. One of the wonderful things about these recorded tutorials is you can pause and you can rewind. You can pause and you can rewind as often as necessary for you to learn the information and the skills. What materials will you need? Hmm, paper and pencil. <laughs> That's it, pretty simple. Now, as you progress through my drawing lessons, you'll notice that I use some more advanced tools that you can get these and you can enjoy them with me. You get a spiral bound sketchbook. I always recommend that you draw in a spiral bound sketchbook that you keep every all your drawings organized. I like using a mechanical Pentel PS209 mechanical pencil. It's usually the gold ones, and it's an HB 9 millimeter lead. I also use a blending stomp, those uh, wonderful blending tortillions. I use a number three. You can get those online, just type in by blending stomp. So I've been, I'll be erasing, and there'll be crumbs, so I use the uh, quick eraser, and I use a, a drafting dusting brush. That's a very handy tool, too. Now, in my more advanced lessons, as we get later in this series, I'll be doing one and two point alignment or one and two point perspective drawings. And I recommend you get a clear plastic ruler for that. That's going to come in really handy. Each of these 21 drawing lessons build on skills that I taught in a previous lesson. We start very simply with a sphere, the cylinder cube, and we build up to more complicated lessons. And an important thing to understand is each idea, each of these skills is completely transferable. You can transfer ideas that when you're combining cubes and spheres to make buildings into drawing a dragon. 
I teach what I call the 12 Renaissance words. These are 12 fundamental principles of drawing that were developed by the master artist over 500 years ago during the Renaissance. These 12 fundamental words will enable you to draw anything, anything at all in 3D, anything you have in your imagination and anything you see in the world around you. Another important idea that I teach throughout the entire 21 lesson course is what I call the drawing compass. I use four positions, four lines, four directions to help me really get my drawings positioned on the paper and look 3D at the time. And I think you're gonna find it really important tool as you develop your drawing skill. We'll be using a layered drawing approach where we start really light with what I call whisper lines. You can barely see them. And then we'll add layer upon layer of detail and definition to make your drawings really pop out in 3D. Throughout the whole series, you're gonna hear me refer to what I call the self-perpetuating success wheel. The more you practice, the better your drawing skill is, the better your drawing skill is, the more your confidence is gonna increase, and the more confidence that you have, the more you're gonna have fun and the more you're gonna enjoy it, the more you're gonna be motivated to practice, which goes around and just builds like a snowball. So it goes on and on and on. The most important thing I wanna to convey to you right now is to have fun. Enjoy learning how to draw. It's a wonderful journey. I want you to give yourself the creative license to explore. Give yourself permission to make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. Celebrate those mistakes as an important steps in your brilliant journey of learning how to draw in 3D with me. So have fun and get your pencils ready. Let's draw. For this 21 draw drawing lesson adventure, we're gonna have some fun exploring drawing the sphere. We're gonna draw a sphere on the left side and the sphere on the right side with the horizon line behind. I'm going to explore putting the light source in the middle and having the shading on opposite sides. And then we'll do a bonus drawing where we'll do multiple spheres using overlapping and shading at the bottom. This is really fun. So let's jump right into our adventure. So let's start with a freehand uh, horizon line going. Now I start with a very light line, just very light. It's called a whisper line. See, just a whisper line. Draw very, very light. You can uh, darken this in later. Now we're gonna start with two spheres. I'm gonna draw a sphere on the left side over here. Take your pencil, just very lightly draw a circle on this side and, a, and we're gonna put the light source in the middle. Let's put another sphere on this side, about the same size, it's really light. Just have fun and just draw that shape here. All right, so they're both pretty close to about the same size. So now I'm gonna darken it in. See what, see what I did? I started really light. No stress, relax, enjoy the process. I always start with a light line and then I darken it in here. And then we'll take our eraser, a very handy tool. Your eraser is gonna be your friend during this 21 draw series with me. We're gonna erase the lines we've already drawn. And I, I have my dusting brush, which is a very handy tool. And I'm gonna put that, darken that horizon back behind here. So let's darken that horizon. That's one of those 12 Renaissance words. And if you use those 12 words, they're 500 years old. You can learn the, uh, those words and you can draw anything, anything at all in 3D. And, uh, at, and I'll show you that chart in just a second. The 12 words, just remember that we're gonna be using that a lot. So one of the words is horizon line. Making sure, give yourself, a, a, your eye a reference where your objects are positioned. Now I'm gonna put the sun, the light source, right in the middle. Stop for a minute. What's a light source? How do you determine where the light source is? So, what is a light source? A light source is anything that creates and emits light. Here, our light source is the sun. If the sun is directly above our sphere, the shadow will be directly below it. But if the light is coming at the sphere from an angle, the shadow will extend out away from the light. 
If the light source moves, the shadows move in the opposite direction. The shadow that we see on the ground is called a cast shadow. Does it matter where you put your light source, just wherever you put the light source, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you're consistent with where the shading goes. See, that'll be our light source. So all the light for, is coming from this direction. See, just you can put little arrows. We get again. This is this is just a fun drawing exercise for you. You don't have to share this with anybody. Of course, I encourage you to share it with everybody. Share it with your friends and your family. But I want you to be comfortable and be very very flowing with your drawing. No stress. And just know you don't have to share it with anybody. You just keep it in your journal if you want to, because you are going to be really proud of your drawing. Then you can share it. But just be really comfortable. No stress. Enjoy. Relax. Have fun. So the sun's up here. They're coming down here. So what I'm going to do is is I'll. I'll what I like to do start with is put the shadow. The sun's here, I, I, right opposite here. I'm going to put the shadow, and I call this what I a uh, drawing direction. Th these lines right here. And we'll be talking more about this in later in a later lesson. I call that drawing direction southwest, and I'll talk more about that in later lessons. Now put that shadow. Just cast here generally. It doesn't have to be scientifically exact, taking rulers and measuring it out, but just generally we're. The sun, the light's here, and so the shadow falls. It's cast onto the ground, cast like a, you're casting a fishing line. See how you cast that shadow, and it anchors that sphere to the ground so it won't hover off and float into space for your for the visual effect. But the sun's right here, right? There's the light. All right, you're doing all right. Thumbs up, okay? No, no stress, no stress. You can make this, this circle image of a nickel turn into a ball or a sphere. The sun's right here coming down. Where's the light source? So we switch it. Now watch this. I'm going to put the shadow. You can twist and turn your paper for this side, for the right side. It's always easier for me to put the shadow over on this side. See this? It's always easier for me to put the shadow over here on that side. You see that? It doesn't have to be scientific, scientifically exact with all the rulers. Just generally get that shadow in here, okay? Now, I think I kind of overdid the shadow here. No problem, no stress, no worry. That's why we have our eraser. Look at that. You can just, I think I went a little bit, a little bit nuts on that shadow. And I darkened it in right here, a little darker, okay? Blend it out, looking cool. And there's, there's our shadow. So we have our sun. We have our two spheres. Now I'm going to shade this. I'm going to shade the edge. Now, when you shade a round object, it's very important. It's different from when you share, shade a cube or a solid object. It's blended on a round object. Blended shading to make it look like it's a smooth uh, surface. So the light's over here. So I'm going to do this in several layers, all right? You can see in this one how I started here and then I blended it, right? I started on the opposite side and I blended it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to shade do one layer, many layers. We'll do many layers here. Look at this. I got, I got my fingerprint right there. See that? That's your, your hands are going to get messy. So, be comfortable with that. You have your eraser. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get lighter and lighter. See that? I'm going to darken it along the edge. See what I'm doing? I get lighter and lighter, and this is where that really cool blending stomp comes in. See that? Now I'm going to do a little scribble shading. There's many different techniques of shading we're going to explore in this 21 Draw series. Uh, cross hatching is one, uh, ha single hatching, cross hatching, uh, scribble shading, stippling. I, see, I love scribble. I'm doing a combination here. I'm doing layers, kind of single hatch. Now, X right here, this is this is where the light hits. X marks the spot, right? X marks the spot where this, the light hits. So this, so I always, I always shade up here. Now I've in all of my drawings, in all of my books, which I'll show you some of the, my books at the end of this lesson, and show you where these lessons are inspired from, you'll see that 99% of the time I shade on the left side. I, I've been shading that way ever since I was in second grade and learned how to draw from my drawing teacher. I've been shading. That's my, my uh, the, the school of thought. Now, most uh, school is shady. Most artists shade on the right side over here. And it's just, I'm not... Now watch, I'm going to shade for you. I'm going to, to be very brave and come over here. I'm not very comfortable on this side after all my years of drawing, right? I'm, I'm what am I, 60 years old? And all these years of drawing, I've been shading over here. I've been stuck in a time warp. It's been 2.15 in the afternoon for me for, for all my years of drawing. Now look, at for you, for you, my fine students and genius artists, I'm getting stepping out of my comfort zone. 
because that's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm encouraging you to step out of your comfort zone and be brave. Give yourself the creative license to explore, to try something new. Look at this. I'm. <laughs> this is so awkward. This is hard for me to shade on the right side. You think that I, I and I actually rehearsed this too to get ready for this lesson. See, it's just, it's not as, it's all right. It's all right. Look at no stress, right? Stress is on the bus. Bye-bye stress. No stress. It's just uh, breaking out of the comfort zone. So you get the idea, all right? Now let's put a little bit darker on the edge, right? Darker, darker, darker. Darker on the edge here. Darker, darker, darker. Shade down here. Continue shading darker on the edge and you get lighter and lighter. See, lighter and lighter. This is where this handy tool, the blending stump. I love these blending stumps. Sharp, you know, darken it. Look, I'll take my time, darken it in here and we're gonna blend it. You know, I could spend a whole the whole 21 minutes just on these two drawings, but I still want to do that bonus lesson. Take your feet, take your stuff. Now watch this. I'm going to blend. Not don't push too hard. You're going to blend light. See that light dark here. See that? Not too, not too. See this? I love these stumps. This I've used this for weeks. So I just love this. I'm going to take you got. I'm not scrubbing it. I'm going to pull it out. So I don't want my drawing to look muddy. I want the value to be very, very apparent from the dark value. Dark on the side, get lighter in the middle. Uh, all right. So sun's over here. I'm going to take, I'm going to uh, very carefully blend it, having fun. This is a wonderful tool. See that? This is your paintbrush for your pencil. Paintbrush for your pencil. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it lighter. I mean, now this is a good time to twist and turn your paper. Look, I, can't, I was keeping my my paper locked down for the camera, but I realized you guys can twist and turn, twist and turn, twist and turn, blend it. I love it. Now that that looks cool. I love it. Now one more thing I love to do, which I did on this one. See this? I love that horizon. I, I you, in all of my drawings in the 21 draws series, you'll see that I cannot resist doing a dark value. See, you put that dark value on the horizon, you get lighter as it goes toward the sky. And it's just a simple way to create this illusion of depth, a simple way to create this illusion that you have a surface here, you know, near and far. Things are lower, are closer to you, things are further away, are are drawn higher in the paper, are drawn smaller in the paper. We're using many of those 12 Renaissance words. And I'll show you that 12 Renaissance word chart at the end. And you can, you can keep that handy. Keep it handy beside your drawing. All right. Let's have a look at the 12 Renaissance words of drawing in 3D. There's foreshortening, squishing a shape to make one part look closer. Then there's placement placing an object lower on the surface of the paper to make it appear closer. Size, drawing objects larger or smaller to make them appear closer or farther away. Overlapping, drawing an object behind another object to make it look deeper in your picture. Shading is adding darkness to the side of an object that faces away from your imaginary light source. Shadow, adding darkness to the ground next to the shaded side of an object opposite the imaginary light source. We also have contour, where on round surfaces, drawing lines curving around the object will give its shape, volume, and depth. There's horizon, drawing the line behind the objects in your picture to create a reference background edge. Density, drawing objects very light and less distinct to make them look far away in the background of your picture. Bonus, which is adding billions of cool, nifty extra ideas to each of your drawings. Bonus ideas are brilliant. Practice, which means to draw at least one 3D drawing adventure each day. Practice is the key to getting better at anything. And finally, your attitude. A brilliant, super positive mental attitude is very important when you are learning a new skill in life, especially drawing in 3D. In today's lesson, we learned about horizon, shadow, and shading. Nice job. You successfully drew two spheres with a single light source shading on, on the opposite sides. Way to go. Voila. Congratulations. You've turned two scribbled circles into a 3D sphere. Here's what we've learned so far. Draw the object. 
Identify the light source. Shade. Easy as pie. Now, let's take that confidence that you have now. You're building your confidence. Let's uh, practice this one. Let's practice the multiple spheres. This is a great one. So I'm going to use a, a separate sheet of paper, and I'll put that to the side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a, uh, a horizon line back here. I'll draw that horizon line. Very light. Just sketch it in. A light horizon. And then where do you want the, the spheres to start? I'm going to put a dot here lower and go up. So I'm going to kind of block it. I'm going to start the spheres about right here on the piece of paper. And I'm going to draw a line. Now I call this direction northeast. And we'll be talking more about this at, in future lessons. Just for right now, know that I'm going up in direction so I'm looking at the paper, trying to get in the center. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Look at I'm just being all fastidious here. So you have a guide point. Now, see, this is the low point of the sphere. We're going to draw up guidelines. Take your pencil, just angle it up to the, to the right. Not super steep, not straight across, just a light line, very light. See that? Just really light. This one, I'm going to, I'm going to angle it up, not too steep, just really light. All right, isn't that cool? So you have your really light whisper lines. Whisper, because we're going to be erasing these. You don't see my guidelines here. So let's start with the first sphere. This is such a fun exercise. We're going to block in that first sphere, and then we're going to use overlapping. Now remember, as objects move further away from you in the picture, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this one, now watch this. I'm going to draw this sphere right here. It's higher. See, it's higher on the paper. That's placement. We'll talk more about that in just a second. See that? And I'll put another one back here. See, block it in about the same size. It's just going to get a little bit smaller. Okay. And we know, now look at this. We know that this sphere is going to be in front. So I'll go ahead and erase that. I just want you to see what I was doing there. See that? So we can, we have the first, first three. You have the, this one, I'll darken it in. This is the largest one. This is lower on the paper. That's using placement near things are lower. And then let's move this one. Look at this is a little higher up. See that? See, now darken it in. It just depends on how many do you want to do. So look at beautiful. And I'll just start with this one. And uh, my favorite position for the light source is over here to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and identify. I'm going to put my light source right up here. I love having the light source. So I'm very comfortable right here. We could put it right here just to challenge me to break out of my comfort zone. But mm, now I'm going to put it on the right side. So the sun's up here. We're going to shade opposite. Let's go ahead. Let's add some more spheres. So we get the idea. Right here, I made this ball transparent so you can see what I'm doing. But we can block this in now. See, it's going to get a little bit smaller on this one. This one's going to get a little bit smaller. It's getting higher. See, there's the size. Near things are larger. They get smaller and smaller and smaller as they move away. I'm going to block this one in. Now, you could do the whole sphere if you want. And just I'm keeping an eye on the sizes. That one's a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to make it, this one get even smaller back. You can do as many as many of these as you want, okay? So there's, uh, I put three on each side. I like the symmetry. On some of my drawings in this series, I'll be talking about asymmetrical uh, drawings. They're not the same on both sides, like for the dragon's teeth or for different drawings. Um, for this one, I'm going to keep it symmetrical. Keep it the same on both sides. Your eye your eye uh, usually enjoys asymmetrical being unbalanced, but I think that this, this looks real nice having it even on both sides here. Draw the, I'm going to darken in these, the near row, and then we're going to put overlapping. We're going to use one of those Renaissance words there. Then I'm going to, now here I go. Look, I'm going to very lightly, see this? I'm just going to lightly block in these. Look at that. Isn't that fun? See that? You can just very lightly tuck these back behind. They get smaller and smaller. See what I'm doing? You get smaller, smaller. Do you love it? Do you love it, love it, love it? I think it's looking terrific. We could tuck it back here, smaller and smaller. Now you could take these lessons. I know these lessons are usually around 21 minutes or so, but I will hope that you get encouraged to keep drawing and maybe draw for an hour, maybe draw this over and over again. 
I, I've been drawing these spheres, these balls, these spheres for, you know, over 40 years. I still enjoy it. I still love it. And it's a good way to, to get warmed up. You know, musicians, they, they rehearse with the musical scales. Even after be, being professional musicians and symphonies and orchestras for, you know, decades, they still do musical scales. They still, look at this. Look, at, I'm going to put, see this is getting smaller. So these are kind of like the artist's musical scales, these simple drawings to practice. All right, now, now this one right here, there we go. This is kind of a funky one over here. Look, it's kind of peeking out. Maybe on this one, look at, this is not a, just a typical sphere. Look at, you can put, you can, look at, I'm going to put a little guy here. Maybe, look at this, this I'm going crazy. Like, I can't help myself. Look at, he is, here he is. Look, you got to. I get it. I put in a little extra. I can't help myself. So he's just waving. Hey, how are you? Welcome to 21 Draw. Woo! He's waving. Now, I'm, you know me. I'll, I'll put that horizon back first, but let's put the shading. The sun's right here. <laughs> I love that guy. Do you love adding little extras? We're going to be adding a lot of extra little characters and action to our drawing. What I call billions of bonus details. I encourage you to take these drawings and add your own ideas. Follow what I'm drawing, draw what I'm drawing, copy what I'm drawing, <gasps> copy. Yeah, that's how the famous Renaissance artists, they all learn by tracing and copying their master artists from Leonardo da Vinci, from uh, Michelangelo, uh, from uh, Rembrandt, from uh, Mark Kistler. No, so I threw my name in with the Renaissance greats. The sun's up here, the sun's coming down, so we're gonna shade opposite, so shade here. Tracing and copying is a great way to build your confidence and practice your drawing, learn techniques, build skill, build confidence, and take off with your drawing imagination, okay? So it's fine. You're not gonna be tracing and copying forever. You're just getting your skill built. And then the more skilled you get, the more confident you get, the more you're going to develop your own drawing style. Drawing style. You can develop your own drawing style. You'll have little hints of, of the, your teachers in your drawing style for, for a while, but then you'll get more and more confident and you'll branch off. Look, I'm putting the cast shadows. You know me, I love the cast shadows right here. Continuing the shading, the sun's from the top. Let's shade opposite. Lighter and lighter. Blending it, take your time, no hurry, no stress. Stress is on the bus. Remember, you'll hear me repeat this over and over again. Enjoy the process. This is fun. Don't stress. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, it has to work for you. You're drawing for the, an audience of one, yourself. Sun's up high. I'm going to put the shadow here. So let's, let's get this shadow here. Let's get this shadow here. Let's shade here. Look at this. Put the shadow. I love, see how that anchors that? And then, now watch this. Little nook and cranny shadow. See that? Little nook and cranny shadow. That no, I love nook and cranny shadow. You will hear me repeat that over and over again as we proceed through the series. Nook and cranny shadow. See how that separates those two spheres? Isn't that wonderful? You love it? I love it, love it, love it, love it. Put that shadow here. All right. See that? Put that shadow. Put that shadow. Put that shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Shading, put that shadow. Put that shadow. Look, I'm darkening underneath here. I just love it. I can't stop myself. Well, we're wrapping up our lesson here, but I'm gonna put that horizon. Look at that. Here, let's put that shadow. Just enjoy yourself. See that? Now, I'll take my Stompy, and I just love using the same Stompy because you get that residual pencil lead on the end, and it becomes more of a, of a paintbrush, you see? And I just blend it. Make that look beautiful. You see, I did it here on this one a little bit. Blend it. The light's coming from right there. Blend it from dark to light. 
I love those nook and cranny shadows. See how the the blending stomp helps you helps you blend that shading. All right, now let's add one more detail. You know me, I just can't can't not do it. Put that nice value. I want to separate the the ground from the sky, so I just put that little dark edge here. It's such a simple thing to do, but it really punches your drawing out. 3D, that's our goal, three-dimensional. Length, width, and depth, the three dimensions. Length and width, right? And depth is near and far, push and pull. Push and pull. Dark along here, and it gets lighter as it comes out. Dark down here, and it gets lighter as it comes out. All right, as it comes up. All right, well, there you go. There is your... Your multiple spheres, so excellent job. Great job on this lesson. You did two spheres with the light source in the middle, and you did your bonus level there. In these lessons, you have learned a lot. Draw objects larger to make them look closer. Draw objects smaller to make them recede. Draw objects in front of other objects to punch them out in 3D. Draw objects higher in the picture to make them look farther away. Draw objects lower in the picture to make them look closer. Shade objects opposite the light source. Blend the shading on round objects from dark to light.